Yeah, hello guys. Um, I would like to talk a bit about a small um, web shop that I created. I'm basically the CEO and CIO and Senior Vice President of Marketing and everything in one person for this application here. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to sell juice. So orange juice, apple juice, all kinds of stuff. And why am I trying to sell juice actually? Well, uh, it's actually a German thing. So uh, in German there's a word called Saftladen. <laughs> and a Saftladen is basically a shop which is not so good. <laughs> uh, the storekeepers are not so friendly. Um, maybe the stock is not the freshest and stuff like this. So it's really a really bad experience shopping there. And uh, as a coincidence, um, the initials of the juice shop actually match the uh, main language being used to develop this, which is JavaScript. But this was, and I'm, I'm really honest there, this is not, not intentional, that was pure, pure luck. So, um, maybe you've heard and seen about uh, some broken web applications already. So one of the most famous ones, I guess, is the budget store. Who knows that one? Budget? Not, uh, only the old guys, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. It's, it's a JSP-based uh, application. JSP for the younger ones is Java Server Pages. It's a technology that's today, I guess, not used much anymore to create web apps. Um, basically, what I wanted to do, I wanted to play around with JavaScript, especially in the back end with Node.js stuff. And I had no real use case to do that, so I just invented the use case, and that's, this is basically what came out of it. Um, and it turned out that actually there was no other application there's actually an OVAS project which lists all kinds of vulnerable applications used for trainings and uh, security awareness sessions and stuff. And there was none yet that's actually created completely in JavaScript. So it's basically the first. And the idea of the juice shop is to have this, I think quite usual these days, uh, single page application front end stuff with a RESTful backend, which looks roughly like this. So it's not really, really I mean, it's not really hip anymore, I guess, to uh, um, to use AngularJS, is it? I, uh, everybody goes to React now. I, I, that's no, my, my impression. Angular 2 is coming. Angular 2 is coming, yeah, but nobody knows. Will it be really cool? Or will it's so, it, yeah. I already have a ticket open up for the juice shop to migrate it to Angular 2. <laughs> Just to be cool, right? So you need that, you need that in the queue. So basically what, what the juice shop is uh, built of is uh, an Angular front end with bootstrap of course, so everything looks like everything else, so that's easy to understand. Um, I guess that was your intention anyway on the, as well on the, on the security red. Uh, in the back end I have a Node.js server with uh, Express and there's a little SQLite database in the back end. So nothing really fancy. Um, object, object relational mapping framework called SQLize, which is getting in a secure way, of course, the data out of the database. Um, and some files are directly loaded from the file system because why not? It's always a good idea to do that. <laughs> so, this is basically the architecture. And uh, yeah, just uh, one person, who's, who's actually uh, would consider him or herself a developer from you guys? Okay, so it's maybe maybe a third or quarter of the of the group. So the next two slides are for you, and then the rest is for the security people. <laughs> so testing. I'm personally I'm a big fan of automated testing. So I put quite some effort into um, making sure that the juice stop is actually well tested, and without me having to click through every feature it has. So what I have, I have a big. Um, in this test pyramid, I have a big uh, number of unit tests running with the Jasmine framework on the Karma, web, uh, Karma test runner. Who knows this icon? No one. Great. This is uh, called Striker Mutator, which is a pretty new framework to do mutation <coughs> testing, which is actually trying to find out if your tests are really good. Because you can write unit tests that just don't assert anything, they just run through the code, you get 100% code coverage, awesome, and you haven't tested anything. And mutation tests actually uh, find out that you are just cheating on your tests and will uh, punish you for that. So on top of that, and next level of the pyramid is some uh, backend testing with FrisbeeJS, which is quite cool to, to test everything that's RESTful. 
and uh, Protractor, which is basically the end-to-end -end test framework. And if I am, I'm lucky, uh, we will be able to see that at the end of the talk, maybe how the end-to-end -end test suite is actually running and uh, attacking the application basically on its own. So on top of that, I must, I want to make sure that uh, Juice Shop works in all kinds of browsers. So I am integrating Source Labs to do some cross-browser testing. And on top of the test pyramid is, of course, the poor guy that uh, in the end still has to test everything manually. And that's not the funniest thing, I guess. <laughs> so, and now he's done. Everything's, all the tests are read. So, building this stuff, this is the second slide for developers, um, is also quite, Hip, using using quite hip uh, services, I guess. So Travis build is basically common these days for open source projects. I hope, especially for those who are running on GitHub. So everyone should have a Travis build because it's free and it's really really easy to set up and it's really really good. This is the same just for Windows based stuff. It's Adveyor. Um, I'm using Heroku. I'm using Docker. I'm using all kinds of um, stuff to put my depend or get my dependencies from, yeah, like Bower and uh, npm. And this is actually Grunt, uh, and I heard that Grunt is now the least coolest um, build tool for JavaScript people. So, um, so I'm not hip anymore. Sorry. <laughs> so, but on the plus side, the Juice Shop is really, really easy to install. So um, basically, if you go to the README page, there's uh, quite new, there's actually a button which says uh, deploy to Heroku. You just push that button and uh, you will can log in with your own Heroku account or you can create one and you will get a free instance of uh, Juice Shop running in no time. Just with the push of a button, which is really cool. This actually works as well if you fork the application, do some changes to it, deploy them um, or commit them back to the repository to your fork and then you can also host that on Heroku, out of the box, quite nice. Um, of course, you can run it locally, you can run it in Docker, or you can just throw the Docker container into an uh, Amazon EC2 instance. So there's all kinds of uh, vari varieties uh, how to actually host this if you want to run the application. So, question is, why would you do so? Um, and I think it's time to actually show what the juice shop is. So typically, if you want, just want to have a look, um, you can just browse it uh, in the internet in, in the running instance there. We will do this now locally, like average Joe, or in German, he's called Otto Normalverbraucher. Um, so we will now just play shopping queen or king or whatever. So this is the juice shop. Basically, very fancy user interface, uh, all in black, because I like, uh, every, de every developer likes black layouts, I guess, these days. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to be black. Um, you can just choose different languages, actually, which is quite new, quite new. so German is completely implemented. Um, Dutch is, as a little bit, I try to translate uh, with help of uh, internet services, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still looking for volunteers to actually do it right. So let's see, right, I can do a search and then I can see all the results which have or in it or oran. So I only find orange juice, for example. I can click here on this little eye and then I see the picture. Sluiten, how is it? I don't know. I, I, let's, let's go back to English, I guess, right? For the video especially. Um, so let's clear the search. Maybe let's have a look at something else. So maybe raspberry juice sounds tasty made from blended raspberry <laughs> pie. Okay, you can also buy the cool t-shirts that I'm wearing. Where are they? Those here, right? Everybody needs those. And other stuff. So it's a typical little web shop. But I cannot put anything into my um, my shopping cart. Hmm, why is that? Well, probably because I have not logged in yet. So let's do so. Um, okay, I don't have a login. So let's register, right? So average at joe.com. Oh, it, it validates my email, does it? Oh, cool, that's good. <laughs> that sounds like a secure validation thing. Okay, let's choose a good password. One, 
Oh, we mistyped. Uh, let's no, oh, never mind. Register. Okay, now back on the login screen. Paste my address. <laughs> hey, I'm locked. And now I can shop. Cool. So, for example, I can put some apple juice in my shopping basket, and I would definitely want some Raspberry Pi and more of these. And I need a new T-shirt, maybe. And oh, a hoodie. Hoodie. It's getting colder these days, so let's buy a hoodie as well. So, where is my shopping basket? Here it is. Right. So everything's here that you actually need in a web shop. I can also add more stuff or can reduce stuff. And uh, it doesn't go below zero, uh, one. Yeah, that's good. So, but I can delete it, for example. I already have two T-shirts, so I can remove that. Okay, perfect. So let's buy this. Oh, there's a present. Presents are always good. Let's click on the present. That's that's a good. Uh, if you take one thing out of this talk. If there's a present button anywhere in the in the web page you visit, just click it. It must be good. Presents are always good. So, coupon code. You need a coupon. Is this, let's see if this is actually available in, in Vardebon. Okay. So, coupon code. I need a coupon code. I don't have one, so let's just type some. Must be ten characters long. Okay. Let's see if this works. Invalid. Hmm. Who would have guessed that? But it says that on Twitter, I can actually get a coupon code. That's cool. Let's have a look. So, this is my, not my, it's the shop's uh, Twitter account. And let's see if we find a coupon code. There's all kind of spam stuff here that we don't care about. We want coupons. Where are coupons? Is that branding in? Ah, here. Have a look. Coupon code. 50% off. That sounds good. So let's just copy this one and see if it works. Redeem. Your discount of 50% will be applied during checkout. Perfect. Um, I could check out now, but uh, what's these payment options? Ah, okay, it's the typical open source begging for money thing. That's the usual that you, you need that. And you can buy merchandise now. So if you want to have a t-shirt or a coffee mug, just go over there. For the shopping process, this is actually not needed. And um, yeah, there's also a get stickers button, but uh, stickers I have for free here after the talk. You can just get some of them. <laughs> so let's check out finally. And what I get now is, okay, I get a confirmation as a PDF, beautifully rendered, which tells me I have to pay like, okay, I have a discount of 50% and I have to pay 63.4000001 in whatever currency I want to, obviously. Good. Okay, that was the shopping process. Now I could also change my password because the old one is not so good. One, two, three, four, hi. New password, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Change. Okay, cool. I don't have to re-authenticate, why would I? Um, I can contact the shop as well. That's also nice. So I can say hello and give a rating. Okay, oh, it's a five, this shop is five star. <laughs> Submit. Thank you for your feedback and your five star rating. Okay, cool. So, I, if I'm not uh, happy, I could also complain. <laughs> so that's a different form. Oh, I can attach a file. Cool. I can attach my invoice. Oh, that makes sense, of course. Why not? Uh, so, let's just attach... Well, what, what, what could we attach here? Let's see. Uh, I just want to attach, for example... Um, I don't want to attach a PDF, right? I just want to attach, for example, the README of the project. Oh, that doesn't work. It only allows PDF. Okay, well, never mind. But it's optional. I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to attach anything. Do I? No. Oh, well, it's broken. Never mind. About us. <laughs> okay, so I can read all the interesting history of the shop here. I should also. Click on this link and see the terms of use, which are also very interesting, obviously. 
And oh, here's actually the feedback, right? So I can, oh, nice, with a slider, yeah, I can go through the feedback. And here's my hello, awesome. I can also go to the GitHub page and all kinds of uh, other things. Well, basically not much more, actually. So I, I actually showed you everything that average Joe would actually see from this application. And as you saw, it's actually it actually works, right? The only thing that's not happening, I will not send you any juice if you order anything. <laughs> But all the rest is actually there. You will there. take the money. Hmm? You will take the money. I will take the money. Um, just to show it again, here are the buttons, right? The red ones. <laughs> okay, so let's log out and go back to the presentation because everybody loves presentations. So that was the shop. Um, I mean, there were, there were no obvious problems visible anywhere when, in what I showed you, I guess. But actually, there are quite a few. Um, there are over 30 broken things in the shop, which actually uh, are there on purpose, and they are mostly there for you to be found, uh, for, for you to find them. Um, for example, when you can do this in a, in a, I don't know, in a weekend course uh, at the university, you can do this in the company as a, as a training for developers, you can do this as a awareness session for management and just show, first show how the shop is used by average Joe and then afterwards you show how it's abused by a hacker and how it's broken. And uh, so you can show a lot of stuff, there's many, many vulnerabilities in there, uh, which I, I call challenges because actually they are tracked and uh, you can find out how many you actually solved. So it's everything, right? Over top 10, everybody needs that. So that's everything from the over top 10 is in there, but there's also a lot of stuff like completely broken business logic and completely <coughs> weird things that you don't find in the over top 10. So lots of stuff to actually find. And these challenges um, have a variety, variety of difficulties. So it's from easy to hard, actually. Um, so some are, for beginners, very, very simple to find, and some are even for pen testers, for seasoned pen, tester, pen testers, uh, too hard to find in a, I don't know, three-hour hacking session. And I actually, I did this in, with, uh, also with Oberst members in Hamburg and uh, on several occasions in different companies, and uh, nobody was ever able to find all the challenges in a typical hacking session of like two or three hours. So, a little bit about the challenges, about the difficulty level. So for the easy ones, <laughs> there are quite a few, where you basically just have some very obvious attack vector. I mean, remember the search field, which showed you what string you actually searched for? I mean, there's an obvious thing that you could try to do there, right? And a login form, I mean, everybody tries certain things on login forms, and probably they might work, right, in this application. So this, these are the easy ones. Some you can just uh, get right by guessing. Um, maybe you will fail sometime, uh, several times in the row, but then in the end you will have a success and have a challenge solved, which feels nice. Um, there are some challenges which require a bit more work. So you have to, for example, find an information leak. Um, what I always tell every training group I work with is, uh, if you use the juice shop, always have the JavaScript console open in your dev tools in the browser. Always, because it tells you a lot of interesting things. So you try to find information, and uh, then you deduct weaknesses from this information, and then you do something, I call this one-eyed brute force, or one-eyed guessing. So basically you don't really understand maybe what's the behind this vulnerability, but you actually are able to exploit it. So um, then, uh, after a while, you will probably succeed in, in getting this right. And then there are the most uh, most uh, most difficult ones, where you need to follow different steps through the whole application, and maybe also outside of the application. Uh, you recognize that I just went to Twitter to get a coupon code. This is basically part of an intentional attack, um, which you can do to enumerate and get tons of coupon codes over time and try to deduct how they are actually built, for example, right? So this is happening outside of the application because the marketing or sales guys of the juice shop are lousy at uh, social media handling, so they, right, um, I won't go any further. So, and there's lots of uh, more stuff like this also hidden. So there's 
a bit happening in the juice shop application itself, but a lot also happening outside that can help you. So um, <coughs> how can you see how, uh, how much, how many of the challenges you have actually solved so far? Um, there's a scoreboard in the application and you didn't see a link to the scoreboard anywhere, did you? When we click through. So basically the first challenge, this one, is actually to find the scoreboard. <laughs> so maybe we just do that right now. So um, any ideas? How could I try to find the scoreboard? Have a look, con opening console, that's 100 points. Opening console is always the right answer to any question regarding the juice shop. So, console open, okay? Robots takes Robots takes it. I don't think there's one, to be honest. But where would I find it, uh, actually? The, the document hmm? so it's probably not there, then. Okay. okay. Nice detail. Uh, that uh, message which you see there has been written by me. <laughs> cool. Very good. And nice detail, um, there's actually so far no vulnerability built into the juice shop that exploits this uh, thing oh. yet. Because the language, the internationalization is really, really new. I just committed it like two days ago. And I didn't come up with a, a proper challenge to uh, actually abuse something like this yet. But you are, uh, I always take pull requests. So if you're an expert on that, go ahead. Okay, so where could I have a look, for example? I mean, it's a JavaScript application. I could, for example, have a look at the source, try to find out what actually is used, and there's a jar, j, juice shop min.js. So, but this is, oh, this is ugly, right? I mean, there's no, nah, no way I would read that. Maybe we just try the old-fashioned way of just looking at the source code in the browser. Let's see what us, what tells, uh, Tells us here. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. anybody sees that? Yeah. Favorite developer mistake? <laughs> Comment out HTML. So, <laughs> so if if I would have a, a a broken authorization scheme in this application, it might be working to actually take this and do this without the second slash. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Hello? You were looking at the source. Ah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There's the scoreboard. And it already solved this challenge. And all the other challenges are unsolved yet. But there's quite a bit of them, and um, depending on how much time we have, in the end, uh, we can go through one or two maybe together. And the rest I will leave for you for another time. So, okay, so they are, these challenges are tracked, and uh, the application actually recognizes when you solve them. So, now I have a ton of FAQs. I mean, this, this slide deck is basically also used as the, the introduction manual to click through yourself, so, uh, so you, you have the same written stuff just without my voice, so uh, don't know if it's better or worse then, but let's just go through the FAQs. So, um, if you want to hack the juice shop, are you allowed to use your pen testing tool set? Yes, you are. Why are you? Because it will probably not help you anyway. <laughs> um, I tried some, some stuff with Zap on my own, it didn't, it, especially in automated mode, like trying to this um, um, active attack mode, it found maybe one cross-site scripting and uh, complained about some missing headers, uh, and that's it, right? So that was, Zap is not so good with JavaScript yet. Um, burp isn't either, to be honest. So it finds a bit more stuff, but not, not, not really everything. I don't know what about the expensive uh, vendor tools but I would assume that they are also not so good in automatically finding uh, certain vulnerabilities in this application. So use whatever tool you want. Second question, can you do a white box pen test? So can you look at the source code basically? No, you can't. 
Because if you do, you will see the source code, which actually verifies if a vulnerability was hit, right? And if you see that, then you immediately know how this works. So this would spoil the whole the whole hacking for you. So, so it's, on hmm? it's, on it's on GitHub. Yes, exactly. But looking it up on GitHub is cheating. So the same goes for uh, looking at the at the console log, at the server log, right in the console. This is also like cheating because there are some SQL statements issued all the time and locked, uh, which are also checking if a certain state is in the database, which would then solve a challenge. And if you see those, you also immediately know how this actually works. <coughs> so don't do that. Don't look at the code and don't look at the log because you will just spoil it for yourself. Can I use the internet? Yes, you can. You can Google and ask Stack Overflow and you can look up over cheat sheets and whatever. Right? Just don't look at the GitHub repo and also don't add log file, look at log files maybe from the Travis build. That's just the same cheating like looking at your own log, right? But other, apart from that, you can use, as you saw, Twitter, you can use the Facebook page, you can use all kinds of things that you might find about the juice shop which are not just giving away the solutions, right? So, Google is fine. If the installation doesn't work for you, well, First of all, please have a look at the README because it should be really uh, self-explaining how to install it. Um, maybe sometimes there's system s uh, situations where stuff doesn't work and then you just open a ticket, for example, or you just go to the community chat, which I will now show. I, I walk over slowly here so the camera can adjust. <sighs> open chat. There's actually a Gitter chat behind this. So everything and it also all the tweets are there, everything that's important you can find here. And you can actually ask questions and I try to answer them more or less immediately. So if you crash the server, this can happen, right? So if you start it locally and you do some really, really crazy requests, which completely breaks everything that Express understands, um, then the server will go down. That's not a bad thing because the application is basically like self-healing. So whenever you start it, it completely dumps all the data and uh, re removes all old files and all kind of stuff and will then just boot up again. The downside is when it deletes all the data, it also deletes all your solved challenges from the scoreboard. So basically you have it all read again. Right? And there's, there would be no way around that. Um, other than having two databases, one for the challenges and one for the real data, and this would be, I, I don't really like that approach actually. So this is the only downside if the server breaks. If you're stuck with a challenge, use the first, try to figure it out, maybe sleep over it uh, one night and then try again, um, or you can just ask for a hint, right? Um, don't ask for solutions, ask for hints, that's more fun. Uh, actually, the end-to-end -end tests I spoke about um, in one of the first slides, they're actually um, automatically doing all the attacks on the juice shop to get a 100% green scoreboard. So basically, if you want to cheat and actually understand how the, an attack is done, you could look at this test suite and find the right uh, challenge uh, where you want to have an idea how this actually works. Sometimes, People find vulnerabilities in the juice shop, which uh, I didn't put there. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it doesn't happen so often, but it happened in the past. Um, and this is actually quite cool because if you then um, just tell me, then I can try to make a challenge out of that. Or you can just try to make a challenge out of that on your own and submit a pull request. For Of course, there are other ways to contribute. So you, if you want to involve yourself in this uh, little development uh, thingy, you could go through the GitHub issues and fix some bugs, or uh, there are not so many actually, but you can uh, implement some of the new fancy features we have planned. Um, or you could just go to our crowd in page and help translating Juice Shop, for example, into Dutch, into right, correct Dutch. <laughs> That would be cool, actually. So, um, If you contribute, you get stickers. Now, you participate in an event like this, so you get stickers anyway. 
Um, so this is not so much of a motivation maybe, but that's basically I, I sent um, in the past few weeks, I sent stickers to Australia twice, to Scotland, to um, the US. So for everybody who contributes, even by just filing a really interesting bug report, they always get like a handful of stickers for their laptops. And uh, if you want to become a project team core member, you could also get a cool t-shirt like this, for example. <laughs> so, the roadmap. Um, I plan at some point in time to migrate the juice shop into the OWASP organization on GitHub, just because that makes the uh, URL a, little more, a bit more intuitive. Um, but that's not so easy. So there are some organizational issues around that, which I first need to overcome, but at some point in time this will happen. Then, of course, the unavoidable Angular 2 migration is on the roadmap. Um, the same goes for the backend stuff and for testing frameworks. I use some which are quite outdated and not maintained anymore and would like to, of, of course, upgrade that. And um, another OWASP guy actually uh, proposed to build in a CTF mode. So capture the flag, um, where actually people can run their own juice shop and the ser central server will then just uh, compare who solved which challenges the fastest, for example, and just uh, have a like a global scoreboard for the for the whole team. So, when will this be done? You are asking, right? Uh, of course, when it's done. <laughs> Typical, <laughs> usual developer answer. Okay. So, the official project site for the juice shop you can find here. The source code, as I said, is on GitHub. Um, if you're interested in some introduction material to web application security, I have some stuff uh, online as well. And from the presentation part, that's actually actually it. So, if you want to, we could now maybe, I'll go over slowly, maybe do one or two attacks on the juice for real. Okay? And I don't want to spoil too much, so... Maybe we will not do the hardest ones, but also not the boring ones. Um, let's see. Here's the scoreboard. Let's pick something. Do we want to start with an easy one? Uh, let's let's start with an easy one. Okay, one easy one and one hard one. Okay, and uh, the rest I leave for you. So um, let's see. Uh, log in with the administrator's account, log in with Jim's user account, log in with... Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the most uh, obvious thing we might try to do in the login form, for example? SQL injection. SQL injection. Like which one? Yeah. Just give me a string. Hmm? If I start typing, it will autocomplete, so it would be... <laughs> if I, and if I type it in the password fields, you only see dots, so it doesn't help. So, what what kind of... What is the most idiotic... Well, one is one. Hmm? Quote or uh, one is one or is... Yes, exactly. Quote or one equals one. And then you have to find the right uh, comment symbol for the database that is used, right? So maybe I can just try to use a bad one. So, <coughs> password, let's see what happens. Oh, that's, a, that's actually convenient because now I don't even have to look into the console anymore to find the error. It's also in, it's also in the UI. Can you zoom in a bit? Oh yes, of course I can. That's a good thing about this uh, totally reactive uh, user. <laughs> almost, almost, almost reactive. <laughs> So, okay, so now we have a nice error message here, which actually tells us quite a bit, right? So it tells us there's a table called users and it has columns called email and password and the password is hashed in a probably totally secure way and so on. <laughs> so let's use, let's use minus minus instead, log in, and it seems I'm logged in now. Do you remember where I could see who I actually am? There's actually one form, one screen where you can see who you are. Do you remember? Who, who paid attention? <laughs> hmm? It actually, it was the contact us. In the contact us, it says uh, who the author is, and this is now your email address. Right? And the complaint, I think, as well. Right. So, 
So I'm not logged in as admin. And why? Because it's the first entry in the database, as usual. Okay, so we now should have this solved on the scoreboard. Awesome, right? Hmm. Let's zoom out. And we also solved provoke an error that's not very gracefully handled. So that might have been this uh, red uh, box in the, in the login screen. Okay, let's pick another one. Um, for example, do you want to do the a really hard one or some, should I leave those to you? Yeah. Really hard one? Do you want to, do you want to hack, the, hack the, the coupon code? Or do you want to hack the Easter eggs? Easter eggs. Easter eggs, okay. So find the hidden Easter egg, that's the, that's the challenge. So, um, if I go back here, and if I just open this here, the text is totally irrelevant, but for those of you who have good, good eyes, uh, what, what, might some, uh, what might I try to actually do with this URL on top here? What, what, is, what is, uh, worth trying? Okay. Yeah, okay, same thing. Try to get a different file. Try to get a different file. Okay, which one? Yeah, okay. But maybe we just have a look what's in the directory, right? So because directory listing is always a good idea to have turned on. So, and we could... For example, see some files over here, and we also, oh, we have the order confirmation yeah, as well in this larger. stuff. Larger. I have both for the account. No, that's, that's not a problem. It works. And we can see the Easter egg file. <laughs> so let's just open that and we win, right? Oh, no, we don't. What now? Only MD and PDF files are allowed. Hmm? Question mark and then what? Uh, the extension. Question mark and then dot md, for example. That's what you mean, right? Uh, doesn't work. No. Any other idea? There's basically two ways to beat this. Like yeah, okay. That's that's a good approach at least. So MD debug equals true. That doesn't help. Okay. Equals false. Doesn't help. Equals whatever. Doesn't really seem to do anything. So what? Hmm? Was there a lock on the console? No, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, that's very good, but no, that didn't work. Uh, add a no byte. Oh, okay. <laughs> so instead of this, using null byte. Okay. Percent. What is null byte? Percent zero zero. Yeah. Dot yeah. md. Yeah. Oops. Uh, <laughs> what happened there? This is actually the, the, it's, it's totally right. Uh, this will actually work. But what what did we do wrong? We have to escape the percentage as well, right? So of percentage zero zero. So what is the escape of percentage? Percentage twenty five zero zero dot md, and here we have the Easter egg. Tada! Congratulations, you found the Easter egg. Okay. Um, Oh wait, this isn't an Easter egg at all, it's just a boring text file. Yeah, we figured that much. Uh, the real Easter egg can be found here. Oh, you're smart, okay. You're, you're too smart for the juice shop team. <laughs> you, you're, you're not allowed to work for us, I guess. So, base 64 decode. There must be some pages. Oh, okay. Okay, decode. Where is it? Okay. And what do we do with that now? Hmm? 
I could just fir first I could just try to use that as URL, right? <laughs> Maybe that's the secret URL. Okay, it, it's probably not. Uh, okay, rot thirteen. What what gave that away? It, yeah, there's a lot of the same stuff in there. So everybody knows what Rob 13 is? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Rotate by 13 characters. Ah, here we go. The devs are so funny, they hit, they hit an Easter egg within the Easter egg. Okay, so this is, this is now what we try to do. Let's see if that works. Woo! <laughs> And we have a, an orange as a planet in 3D in JavaScript in the juice shop. I mean, if that's not a cool Easter egg, then I don't know why. <laughs> so, okay, I guess that's it. Um, let's have a look at the scoreboard and then we can feel really, really cool because we solved a two and a three star challenge in less than five minutes. Awesome. Cool, thank you. Any questions? <laughs> questions? Volunteers for translating anything? Yeah. Just go to just go to this crowd and link. It's really it, this is really a no brainer. It's, uh, Shoot those who are not volunteering. Yes. No, I don't. Grab some stickers and some buttons if you like. So um, they're free even without contributing. If you plan to contribute, you can take even two things. If you want to. <laughs> then I don't have to send stuff via mail to you. So, thanks.